Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.1 RC or release candidate is out to developers and public beta testers. This is the final version of iOS 16.1 that will release to the public as long as there's no additional issues. And this came in at 5.26 gigabytes. Anytime you go from a regular beta to the public version, it's going to be a very large install. We'll talk about when to expect this along with iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura a little bit later as we know the actual dates for this now. Now, if you're a beta tester and wondering if you should delete the beta profile, I would probably wait until this is released. And the reason for that is there could be a release candidate too, if additional bugs are found. So I would hold off for that. And of course, if you want to continue beta testing, you'll need that profile. Now, along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 16.1 RC. Finally, they're calling it 16.1. macOS 13 Ventura RC, watchOS 9.1 RC, along with tvOS and HomePodOS 16.1 RC, and also iOS 15.7.1 RC for older devices. All of those are available now for developers and beta testers. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. Now, if we tap on the version number, you'll see iOS 16.1 with a build number of 20B79. This should be the final build released to the public unless there's an additional release candidate. And in this update, there are some new features. So we'll talk about new features and also bugs and more. And also Apple released a bunch of iPads today. We'll talk about that a little bit later along with Apple TV and then the release date of all of the final versions, which should be very soon. Now, first let's talk about new features. There is a modem update in this version. So if you're having connectivity issues with this version, any of the betas as well, you'll still have a modem update going to the release candidate. So that hopefully will resolve any additional issues you're having, whether that be dropping signal and more. However, it has been pretty good overall. Now, as far as new features, well, this update, as I've told you in the past with different beta updates, will bring the battery percentage update to the other phones. So if we go down to battery under battery, you'll see battery percentage on the iPhone 10 R iPhone 11, 12 mini and 13 mini. So this will be available once it's released to the public or if you're on the release candidate, they've also added a feature in certain countries under battery as well. If we go again under settings, go down to battery under battery. If we go to battery and charging, you'll see we have clean energy charging. This is something that's region specific, but it says in your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can reach full charge before you need to use it. So this goes along with optimized battery charging, and it's just something new that's included with 16.1. Something we weren't sure about that Apple has added for photos is iCloud shared photo library. This is something that we learned about that was coming with iOS 16 that they pushed off until this version. So if you're sharing with someone else, so if we tap on your name at the top and then you go to iCloud, then tap on photos, under photos, you'll see if I scroll down, we have the option for shared library. You can now share this with people so that you can share different photos with them, whether you're taking them and want to share them individually or a bunch of them from your library, you can do that under the camera. You'll see an option for that where you have a couple little people here. Let me rotate it. You'll see here. If I take a photo and that's turned on, it will go automatically to my shared library and share with my family or friends or whoever I selected. If I turn it off, it won't. So you can select this individually individually and you can have separate libraries for this as well. So you have those in your photos. So if you go into photos and within photos, if we tap the three dots in the upper right and we have shared photo library turned on, you can see your personal library and shared library. And then also you can enable a badge to let you know if it's being shared. So that's something where you can quickly filter these out or just see both of your libraries all together and just have that badge there if you shared that photo. So it's really nice to have all of those simple ways to share and and also you can edit permissions and let either everyone edit the photo or no one at all. So it's up to you if you've shared that with them. All of those features have been brought to iOS 16.1. Also something we've been looking forward to is live activities. This was enabled in 16.1. So live activities allow third party apps to show different statuses on the lock screen or in your notifications. So to show you an example of that, Apple really only allowed you to do that with the clock so far. So if maybe we set a timer, swipe home, 
then go into our notifications, you'll see it down at the bottom. However, there's another app I have that does this as well called iEvent Timer. It's in testing. If we go over to iEvent Timer, this one already has a custom event you can set. And then also you'll see it in the dynamic island and live activities. So if we go into the test event and then maybe I modify this for today, we'll change the time, hit save. It will go into the dynamic island if you have a dynamic island. And then also you'll see it as a live activity in your notification center telling you when the next event is. So this is something you're going to see more and more with different applications as they update their apps. So you'll see this with sports and everything else as they update them. Hopefully we'll see more of that very soon. And you also have a setting for this as well to show it on your lock screen, whether it's unlocked or not. If we go into settings under your face ID and passcodes, if you scroll down, you'll see a live activities toggle. This allows you to turn that on or off based on whether you want to show this when it's locked or not. So that's something that they've added and is available in this update. I can't wait to see more of this in use. Now this update also adds the ability to use fitness plus without having an Apple watch. So you can use fitness plus now, even if you don't have an Apple watch, you can use it directly on your phone. You'll be able to use the app, go into fitness plus and subscribe and then work out using any one of these workouts. I've been using the walk workout with the Apple watch. It's really nice just to use time to walk and listen to some stories while you're doing that. And now everyone can do that. So it's great that they've added it. They've also updated books. So if we go into books, this is a pretty simple update and this is an old book, but as we scroll through books, the controls will now disappear or automatically hide as we're scrolling through. You'll see they're hidden, tap the screen, they come back. So you can go into those controls, but as you're scrolling through again, they'll hide after a few seconds of reading. So it takes a moment, they go away and now they're gone. So it's nice. They've just added that little touch. Now also they've updated home to support matter accessories matter launched a week or so ago, and it's officially out. It's a standard that's supported by not only Apple, but Google and others, and it will allow you to add different matter accessories that's officially supported. And it now is a standard. So it's great that they've enabled it. It was something that was promised with iOS 16 and it's finally here. They've updated the wallet app in 16.1. You can now delete it from your phone. So if you press and hold remove app and then tap on delete app, it will ask you to delete it, to delete this app, first remove any cards in settings. So you can delete it from your phone now if you want to do that. And they've also added the ability for key sharing. It enables you to securely share a car, hotel room, and other keys and wallet using messaging apps, such as messages and WhatsApp, according to Apple. So now you can share that within wallet and have a secure key. Also, there's a savings account, which enables Apple card customers to grow their daily cash. You can deposit it in a high yield savings account, according to Apple. So that's something they talked about in a press release earlier in the week. It's now available. And if we go to Safari, you can see more information here where it says cash into a new high yield savings account from Goldman Sachs. So you'll be able to do that directly through the app. So if you're interested in that, that will be enabled once 16.1 releases to the public. Now, iPad OS 16.1 is coming very soon and is available in RC as well. And it has a couple new features. Now, this is going to include everything from iOS 16 on the iPhone, except for the lock screen widgets and things like that. But it will include all of the different features, such as being able to edit messages and more. But there's a couple new features that we didn't know about that they've added. On the latest iPads, we'll talk about in a moment, you'll be able to hover the Apple Pencil over the screen and it sort of, sort of shows an input there. And then also when you're using Scribble within an app, it now allows you to automatically write text and it sort of enlarges in messages. So if we go into messages and within a text box, if we just wanna write Apple, You'll see it expands the box, understands what I wrote, and then puts in the typing. That's something we've had before, but now it automatically expands to let you know that you're writing within that box, making it a little easier. So that's something they've updated with Scribble specifically. Also, there's some new options for the pencil as well. So if we go into notes and within notes in the upper right, if we tap on the pencil options, we swipe over. This took me a moment to find. So if we swipe over, you'll see it wants to move the box around. But if you swipe in this field here, you have three different new pens. So we have watercolor, mono line, and fountain pens. So if we go into this one, we've got this pen here. We can change the color. We've got watercolors. And then we have our fountain pen, of course, right here. And we can write Zolotech. 
and then we also have monoline. So you'll see we have three different options now. It was a little bit tricky to find, but you just swipe over in your pencil settings. iPad OS 16.1 also adds support for AirPods Pro second generation, along with Find My and Precision Finding for the MagSafe charging case. Also personalized spatial audio options, not just for the second gen, but also AirPods third gen, AirPods Pro first gen, and AirPods Max. So again, all of the features with iOS 16 and and iOS 16.1 come to iPadOS 16.1. So we'll have a video about everything new when it's available. Now there's also bug fixes in iOS 16.1. Apple mentions three specifically, and the first one has to do with messages. Deleted conversations were appearing in messages even after they were deleted. So they would be in your message list here if you have that enabled. Also, if you're using dynamic island content, it may not be available if you're using reachability. So if maybe we go into music, let me turn this down here, we'll play a song, swipe home, it goes into the dynamic island. If we're using reachability, you just sort of pull down from the top of the, or the bottom of the screen to bring the top down. You can now go into that content from the dynamic island. That was buggy before and wasn't working. Also, they've fixed that bug that we mentioned before with music. When you tap on the album art on the lock screen, that's still working properly. It's not bouncing anymore. It just fades in and out nicely. And also they fixed CarPlay for some people. So it said they used to have an issue where it wouldn't connect if you were using a VPN app. That will now work properly. Maybe that was what was causing the issues all along. We don't really know, but they still are talking about CarPlay. So hopefully it resolves all those issues. Something else they've fixed has to do with copy and paste. There's now an option in different apps that allow you to copy and paste from and to that will ask you if you want it to prompt you every time or not. Now I'm not seeing this on many of my apps, but in some apps you'll see this pop up if you copy and paste a lot to them. So for example, if we go into the craft app, I copy and paste to here often, but sometimes you'll see it actually pop up and ask you if you want to copy and paste, you'll have an option for that if you want it to do that or not. So that's something they've resolved by just giving you a prompt. I think just prompting you once is good and then you can select that later on. Now, Apple has not mentioned anything as far as fixing the issues with brightness on iPhone 14, where if you're in a low brightness situation, you have brightness turned down, it could flicker in dark areas of the display. So they haven't mentioned anything about that or anything else, whether it's storage related or anything like that. They also haven't mentioned anything about satellite connectivity yet. So that's coming to iPhone 14 models, but it's not enabled yet. However, we did see it in the code with earlier betas. So I'm not seeing that yet and hopefully it's enabled very soon, but still I don't see it in our cellular settings. They've also mentioned that there will be security updates. However, they don't typically update that until it's released to the public. So you can see the security website still has iOS 16.0.3 on it. So nothing there that's actually new Apple today and Announced new iPads and an Apple TV. They did not announce new Macs. I can cover that more in a different video if you'd like, but they announced a new base iPad that looks similar to the iPad Air, but has the camera in landscape mode instead, and then has a new keyboard folio case. It's available next Friday, as is the new iPad Pro with M2. So that has a new hovering pencil ability and is very similar to what we have already, but has an M2 processor in it. Both of them are available next Friday. You can order both today. And then there's also a new Apple TV that's available on November 4th, but you again can order it today. They reduce the price and it also has thread support on the higher end model and is 149 for the higher end model. So it's a little bit less expensive, but isn't out yet. And the remote now uses USB-C. So all of these devices are USB-C. I think we'll see that on the next iPhone as well, typically to comply with rules. Now, because they announced this, we now know the dates of iOS 16.1, iPadOS 16.1 and macOS Ventura. They all release next Monday. So on Monday, if we go to our settings here or go into the app here, we can go to Mac and see this either on Mac or iPad, scroll over and you'll see it now says Mac OS Ventura. This has been updated and you can see it says available on 1024. So that's Monday. This will be out to the public for everyone on supported devices. That's true of iPad OS as well. And also I would imagine iOS 16.1. They typically release on the same day along with TV OS, home, home pod OS and watch OS 9.1. All of those things should be available and even iOS 15.1. 7.1.
So look for those. Then of course I'll have videos about those as soon as they're available. Now, overall performance of iOS 16.1 seems to be good. ProMotion seems super fast. Performance seems to be great. And even on older devices, such as the iPhone 8 plus, which doesn't seem that old, but is the oldest supported device along with the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 seems to be nice and smooth. This is the first time I'm scrolling through things. If we go into Apple music, we'll let it load here. Give it just a moment. Everything seems to be nice and fast. So whether you're loading a game, going into different apps, it seems to be nice and quick. So no issues here. I think it would be great for most people and heat on the phone seems to be fine as well. It doesn't seem to be getting too hot initially because it's such a large install. It is going to be a little bit warm processing different things in the background and more, especially if you're using shared photo library, it needs to process all of that and share that out. Again, it's going to take a little bit more power and in turn lead to a little more heat. But again, this is managed by iOS, nothing to worry about. It's just warm, not super hot. As far as benchmarks, I ran those very quickly on this device and we'll let it load. Geekbench loads kind of slow on this for some reason, but we'll give it just a moment. We'll go to history. I ran it twice as it was very low the first time since it's processing again in the background, but you'll see single core was 1,874, multi-core was 5,369. Very close to what we had with beta five. I would expect this to improve and we'll probably have more about that in the follow-up video on the weekend. As far as battery life, battery life has been okay. For some people, it's been great on the betas, especially beta five. If we go down to battery, I don't talk about this too much as it takes a few days to know what battery is actually like. But my battery health is 100% on the latest phone. And yesterday, I didn't have great battery, but it is different for many people. You'll see I had three hours and 50 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 10 minutes of screen off time, and used almost 75% of my battery. The day before, I used 50% and only had about three hours. However, much, much of my battery is actually the home and lock screen and YouTube. So again, I need to change some of that. A lot of notifications are popping up and I need to change that. So that leads me to, should you install iOS 16.1 RC? Well, if you're not on the betas yet, you may want to hold off until Monday. However, this should be the final version. And if you're a developer or beta tester, you could certainly try it out. If it doesn't work, you could have a backup and downgrade using a computer, but just make sure you have a backup up and that you know what you're getting into as far as betas go there could still be some bugs that apple needs to fix when they finally release it i still do have the feedback app since i didn't release the beta profile and if we go into it and we go into the inbox you'll see the ios 16.1 release notes these are just the notes of known issues again for things like the matter accessories this really hasn't changed from what we had before we do have some resolved issues for store kit but it's basically the exact same we had with the previous two betas so known issues with matter as well as known issues with memory allocation. So those still need to be fixed. They haven't updated that yet. Of course, that will lead us to iOS 16.2 betas coming very soon. So probably next week or the week after 6.16.2 beta one, and we'll continue on from there until next year where we have iOS 17. And so that's everything in this particular update. This wallpaper is by HK3TON. Of course, I'll link that in the description like I normally do. And if you found anything else I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.